Doing today's introduction is Dr. Patricia Pavier. Dr. Pavier is the group leader of the Radiological Materials Group at Pacific Northwest National Laboratory. She's also the chairperson of the Gen 4 International Forum Education and Training Working Group. Patricia. Thank you so much, Berta. Good morning, good evening, everyone. Uh, we have uh, with us today Dr. Jen Wong. He's an associate scientist of nuclear engineering and engineering physics at the University of Wisconsin-Madison. His research interests include the advanced numerical analysis of nuclear safety and reliability for various reactor designs. He is leading a few projects on the heat pipe microreactor, the temperature gas cool reactor transient analysis, and uncertainty quantification by artificial intelligence. He is also serving on the ANS, Thermal Hydraulics Committee and the Journal Progress in Nuclear Energy, Annals of Energy Research as Editorial Board. Dr. Wang earned his PhD from Xi'an Jiantong University. So without any further delay, I give you the floor. Dr. Wang, thank you so much again for volunteering to give this webinar. Okay, um, good morning and um, good afternoon and good evening, everyone. And um, thanks a lot for the introduction. And I appreciate the opportunity uh, to speak at the Generation 4 International Forum here. And uh, um, thanks a lot for all the audience time um, to, sh uh, to come to listen to me sharing my recent research on the heat pipe microreactor. So first of all, I would like to um, go through the development of microreactor history and introduce some basic concept of how heat pipe works. So microreactor is becoming more popular and uh, attracting more interest due to its flexible and uh, its reliable power supply. And it's small enough, could be transported and provide on-site installation. And it has been applied or could be applied in multi uh, application situation. For example, the explanation of deep space, the garments and off-grid energy supply and also energy supply for some remote communities. And currently, the most popular designs mainly includes the heat pipe cooled microreactor and also the gas cooled microreactor. And however, last year, a lot of concepts and technologies are not tested or are not proven. So we still have to conduct the research to demonstrate the designs are safe and efficient enough. The so efforts on developing the uh, uh, microreactor technologies could start from 1960s, along with the uh, using of nuclear energy. And a bunch of projects like Cluster, Homer, uh, and a lot of others are already uh, being conducted. Start from 1960s, and this figure shows an example of engineers from NASA and the National Nuclear Security are working on a kilo power reactor system. The efforts are still going on. So I list some of the current efforts from the United States industry. So for example, the Westinghouse is working on Eric and Okra from California is working on Onona. And uh, both of them can see the uranium and the fuel. And Westinghouse also can see the trace of fuel. The reactor power is between one to five megawatts, and we also have other efforts from the gas cooled micro reactor. So the companies like Halogens, USNC, and X Energy are working on it, and most of the power are below 15 megawatts. And a bunch of the details of the heat pipe micro reactor design. So Westinghouse Eric Design used the mature heat pipe technology from the Los Alamos National Lab. 
it's considered a solid block with three different types of channels, including fill routes, moderates, and heat pipes. And Oculus Aurora powerhouse, it's inspired by the NASA's killer power reactor. And it's also using a solid block with uranium fuel and heat piping technology. And another background I would like to share is how the heat pipe works. So I see in this figure um, from internal to outside, the heat pipe could be separated into three parts, the current, the weaker, and the lower. And from the left part to the right part, the heat pipe is also includes three parts, in evaporator, adiabatic, and the condenser. So firstly, um, it's liquid sodium here at the coolant channel of the left side. And here, the liquid solid will be heated into vapor solid and go through adiabatic and go into condenser. Here it will be cooled down into liquid solid again and flow back through the weaker. So through this process, the energy will be transferred from the heat source to heat sink, and the process doesn't need extra energy supply, and the energy transfer coefficient is high. That's why heat pipe is so popular, and it's considered to be applied in micro reactor technologies, and also a, a bunch of multi industry engineering applications. So in first chapter, uh, we introduced some background of the micro reactor development history, and then we introduced how the heat pipe works. And then after that, I would like to introduce the numerical tool we are using and the benchmark comparison between our result and other national labs result as part of verification and validation. So the numerical tool we are using is called SAM and Moose. And we also use cherries and qubit to build the geometry and uh, creating a mesh for us. So Moose is a multi-physics platform origin from Idaho National Lab. It can provide definition of key physics process, material properties, and post-processing. Cherries and qubit is a software from Sandia National Lab it can provide the building of CFD geometry and also meshing. So Smooth can read the 3D geometry from cherries and qubit. And SAM is a software prepared for the advanced reactor and its origin from Argonne National Lab. And SAM also has a 2D heat pipe model, which can transfer, which can calculate the fluid flow and the heat transfer behavior in the heat pipe. So the whole process could be summarized as 3D heat conduction, liquid flow heat transfer in the SAMS model, and interfacialized momentum and energy transfer in the heat pipe model instead. And the following figure explains how those softwares are working together. And uh, um, here is the benchmark example problem provided by Aga National Lab. So at this moment, since we don't have any published uh, experiment data, we have to do a code-to-code -code benchmark comparison to check our um, calculation result. So as we can see from the left figure, so the uh, red block is the monolith, and the internal cylinder is the fewer. And there are six heat pipes insert into the monolith. And the right figure is a cross section from top view. Fewer heat pipes, MPD for 2D heat pipes, and monoliths. And the fewer and monoliths list is two meters as an assumption here. And the heat pipe list is three meters, while the evaporator is also two meters. It's totally insert into the monoliths. And we also have an uh, adiabatic and the condenser. They are 0 0.5 meters each. And we have some other details, parameters for the design. So first of all, we keep our time step for both calculations set. And the initial temperature 
for the system is 875 Kelvin. And the solidly, solid model is um, boundary condition is adiabatic. And heat pipe condenser temperature is 750 Kelvin. The system energy energy source is an electrical heater and the energy sink is the heat pipe. And in this table, we list a bunch of the thermal properties, including the density, specific heat, and the thermal conductivity. For the um, three parts of the system, monoliths, fuel rods, and the three components of the web of the heat pipe, including the coolant, the wick, and the wall. And we come to our result. So um, left figure shows the maximum temperature comparison and the right figure shows the heat transfer comparison. So we can see that the results of UW and Argon National Lab match each other very well. Um, last year, a few very small difference between these two models. It's the uh, um, mesh nodes. So we are using different software to build the geometry and the number of nodes are a little different, um, listed here. And we assume that's the reason for the a small difference at 10,000 seconds. And also at least 10 point is the transfer from the temperature increasing, heat transfer increasing, comes to a steady state. So we um, still believe that our calculation result matches to Argon National Lab's result well, and the code to code benchmark comparison and could support our um, future uh, numerical answers for the safety transient check for the heat pipe microreactor. So after the uh, introduction background information of the numerical tour and the benchmark verification and validation, uh, we start to do a state state calculation. And based on the steady state calculation, we selected a few Critic parameters to check the sensitivity analysis, check how it how these critical parameters affects the result. The research target we selected is called magnet. The full name of magnet is microreactor engine non-nuclear experiment test bed. And it's a facility at Argan, uh, at, at Idaho National Lab. And uh, this facility is uh, it's a test bed and it's open for different uh, micro reactor design. So the ignition design is the heat pipe cooled configuration. And the details of the design are shown on the right figure. So we have um, 54 fuels, it's the blue circle. And the bright circle is the heat pipes, the number is 37. And here, left part is the um, figure of the test bed. And it's MPT internal. And when we have the experimental facility ready, we can insert it into the test bed. And a bunch of more details of the experiment design. So the total value um, of the um, China's 91 and uh, um, the energy source the system is hit by the electrical heater. And uh, the model is block and the heater is made of stainless steel. So as we know in reality, uh, this design could be some material difference, like model is could be graphite, and the fuel rods could be um, uranium or chisel fuel. But uh, for experiment design, we use stainless steel here. And for the power distribution, um, at the um, initial of the calculation, we consider all the power in different fuel are same. That means, in other words, we didn't consider the enrichment of the fuel. Um, but in the future, we can consider the industry suggestion and maybe we reduce the power um, at the side and increase the power in the center of the model is. And in each of the fuel, we assume a cosine power shape um, which is closer to the actual power profile. And then important note is that we calculate the 3D model list and the electrical heater, and we calculate the 2D heat pipe. They are calculation in the same time, 
and the same system, but in two different parts of the software. Okay, so here comes the uh, our model of the magnet facility. And um, we this is the 3D model, including the models and the viewers, the heat piping circuit. So it's very similar to our first example, but it's more complete. And the right figure shows the cross section from the top view. And here, here we also an order of heat pipes and fuels in in different number. So this could help us explain the calculation results much better in the um, foreign result. And here are some more details of the experiment facility. So three most important parts: modulus, electrical heater, and heat pipe. Model is height is one meter, diameter is 0 0.244. Material is stainless steel, boundary condition is adiabatic. And the electrical heater, number is 54, diameter 0 0.014, stainless steel, and the power is 75 kilowatts. So this power is connected to the number of heat pipe. So we assume each heat pipe could remove the power of two kilowatts, and we have 37 heat pipe. And that's why we define the power, total power at 75 kilowatts here. And diameter of heat pipe is 0 0.0156. And the materials, the current is sodium, weak and water steel standing steel. And the radiance is, is increasing from current to weaker and to work. The length is two meters total, one meters evaporator, same to modulus and the electrical heater and 0 0.2 meters adiabatic and 0 0.8 meters of condenser. And the heat transfer coefficient between the modulus and the heat pipe evaporate part is 25 megawatts per meter square per kilowatt. And the condenser wall temperature is 755 kilowatt. So this is the details of the magnet facility. And once we put all this information into the magnet, uh, into our numerical modeling, we can get the results. And the most significant results we can get is the 2D temperature distribution. And we use a software called PileView to deal with the result. So this is the results of the base steady state result. And we can find this is the cross section um, from top view and cross section from side view. And the temperature here, there are some uh, significant hot part is the location of the fuel. And the model is uh, between each fuel is also hot. And we leave empty holes for the 2D heat pipe. And uh, besides the 2D temperature distribution cloud, we can also use Grafa to get our result, for example. So you can see we selected a line on the surface of a cross section of the modulus fuel and heat pipe system. And we can show the temperature history, temperature distribution along with this line at X, X, zero. So the peak point are the location of the electrical heater and the low point is the location of heat pipe and the temperature between them is the modulus. And when we uh, connect all the temperature together, we can find it's a constant length. And uh, we also can draw a figure from y x zero. And we draw these figures, it's trying, we draw these graphs, it's trying to help us um, find the location of hot part in the system. And after the um, steady state, we did a, a bunch of other different change of parameters to compare the sensitivity ANSYS. So in first group, uh, we change the mesh type. Uh, initial mesh we are using is HX20. 
and we can change it to HX8 and HX27. Another parameter we change is the heating power. We increase it from 75 to 100. And the third sensitivity parameter is, is the heat transfer coefficient. We transfer it from 10.5 to 10.3 and 10.7. And the fourth one is the condenser temperature from the heat pipe. And we change it from 70, uh, 750 Kelvin to 730 Kelvin. And uh, some of the background information of the, uh, well, what's the mesh type? So HEX8 means eight nodes. So when we want to describe a volume, we use eight, eight nodes to describe it. And the HEX20 and the 27 means 20 nodes and 27 nodes. So in theory, when we are using higher number of nodes, the calculation result, the prediction is more accuracy. However, since the, um, we are using more source to model it, the calculation speed will be delayed. So we have to balance the demand on the prediction accuracy and the calculation speed. Then we come to the result. So the first one is comparison of different mesh type. So we can notice light HX20 is the line here. If we reduce the uh, nose number, results is changed. And there are much less point in the lens. Of course, the accuracy is lower. If we increase the um, nose number from 20 to 27, the results is not changing too much, which means HX20 is our best option. We don't want to delay, re reduce it to reduce the uh, prediction accuracy. And we also don't want to increase it to uh, reduce the calculation speed. We also check some other parameters like uh, um, heating power. And we can find with two different heating power, the heat pipe still works very good. It transfer energy out very efficient and the model is temperature are not changed too much. We also change the heat transfer coefficient at the left figure, and also the condensing temperature of heat pipe at the right figure. So all of them, the model is and field temperature is not affected too much. So which means all these parameters are under the limit value of the sensitivity test. So in section three, we introduced our uh, work on a steady state and also uh, a test uh, of the sensitivity for uh, different numbers of parameters. And after that, we start to think about uh, what we can do um, for some changing safety case. What will happen if different numbers of heat pipe fails or heat pipe fails at different time? So we want to check the integrity of the heat pipe microreactor in some transient case. The first group of the transient is listed in this figure. So case one is the best case, no heat pipe fails. And in case two, as we, as we discussed before, so we have four rings of heat pipe. So in case two, the first ring of heat pipe fails, case three, First, the two ring heat pipe fares, three ring heat pipe fares, and four rings all heat pipe fares. That's the difference between case one to case five in the transient safety calculation. And then we come to the calculation results. First, the result we want to check is the maximum and average field temperature. So as we can see here, the pink line, when all heat pipe fails, the temperature increasing to super high, which is over 1400 Kelvin, almost 1500 Kelvin. So it's much higher comparing with the melting temperature of stainless steel. And of course, it's later the integrity of the heat pipe microreactor system. And at the same time, we can compare the, the other calculation result. And we can observe light when more heat pipe fails, the temperature increasing could be much higher, uh, speeding could be much higher, and the final temperature is also higher. 
The same situation is observed in the figure of average fuel temperature. And we also check the peak and average model temperature. And in these two figures, we get rid of a crazy um, pink line. And here we can find light on, um, again, the temperature um, when the um, more heat pipe fails, the increasing of the temperature is much higher. And also the final temperature could be higher comparing with different other cases. And the tendency is same in different um, parameters, no matter its maximum or average model is temperature. And we can, another parameters we can compare is the temperature distribution at this line on the surface of a cross section from top view. And we can clearly find the comparison from case one to case four. And the peak point is the location of heat pipe. Low point is location, uh, a peak point is location of fuel. And the low location is, low point is location of heat pipe. And the connection is the model is. And we can still clearly see light. More heat pipe fares, high temperature you will observe. So this is three ring fares, two ring fares, one ring fares, and the black line is the steady state. We selected the two case ex example to show the temperature to the temperature cloud. So these three figures are heat pipe, monoliths from side view, monoliths from top view. So for a heat pipe, we can find the red parts are in the bottom. So where the heat pipe is inserting to the monoliths. And the center temperature is much higher. And the um, cloud view from side could be something like this. And the temperature distribution is similar to a cosine distribution, which matches the uh, definition of the fuel power and uh, ignition condition. And also we observe the similar thing on uh, the 2D heat pipe distribution here. And we can also check the values of the heat pipe. So um, we already discussed the light the heat pipe in ring one and heat pipe in ring two fares. And here we also let heat pipe one, heat pipe three, and ring one and ring two. It will force to the bottom, same to the condensing temperature, 750 Kelvin. And heat pipe 15 is from ring three. And that's why it's still working. And when the, um, some other heat pipe fares, the bottom of heat pipe of ring three increase to transfer more energy from the system. And the energy transfer of the three pipes, it matches the situation we observed for the temperature. Another case is case five. In this case, all heat pipe fares and the lights why the 2D heat pipe situation, temperature here doesn't make any change. And also um, we check the model is temperature from side view, from top view, and uh, we can observe light. If we compare the color, it's over 400 Kelvin, below 1500 Kelvin. It's super higher, higher than the maintain temperature of the stainless steel. And also for the situation of heat pipe, everything first down means all heat pipe failures. And there's not any heat energy transfer from the system, from all the heat pipe, no matter it's from ring one, ring two, or ring three. So let's the first group of our calculation and we compared different numbers of heat pipe fares and we check the result. And after that, we can see um, what will happen if things have, if the same heat pipe number of fares, but it happens at different time. So here we keep the case one steady state and we use case three as the best case. Here two ring of heat pipe fares at zero seconds. And from case six to case seven, uh, it, all of them are two rings of heat pipe fares, but it happened at different time, 500 seconds, 2000 seconds, and 10,000 seconds. And we will check what will happen. So here's the results 
first the result I show here is the maximum and average field temperature. And we can find the light. Case one is the safe state. And for the other case, they have the same tendency that at some point, the temperature will increasing because two rings of heat pipe fails and the model is and the heat pipe are suffering a higher energy input. And at some point it will come to a steady state and the peak temperature will stay here. And the tendency for all of these cases are same, but it's kind of delayed due to different um, failure time of a heat pipe. And also the situation is similar for the average fuel temperature. And we also check the situation for the maximum and average model list temperature. Same conclusion here. All the cases are kind of delayed, depends on the different failure time of the heat pipe. And then we compare um, the 2D cloud temperature of case three, six, seven, eight at 5,000 seconds. So at this point, case three and case six. So case three, heat pipe fails at zero seconds, case six, it fails at 5,000 seconds. So for both of them, um, at 5,000 seconds, the temperature already reaches to a steady state, the peak point. And in case seven, the temperature is still increasing. And in case eight, nothing's happened yet at 5,000 seconds. And that's why we observe the different temperature in different cases. And another temperature comparison at 20,000 sec 20, seconds at the end of the calculation. So we can observe the tendency as still the same um, for this line at x x zero, and the peak point is heat pipe, low point, a uh, heat point is fuel, and the low point is heat pipe. And at the end of calculation, all the three cases reaches to its peak temperature. So no matter how long you hold the failure of heat pipe, finally it will come to the case of heat pipe. And the early black line here is the steady state and for the comparison. And here we selected one case, case eight, as an example to show the distribution. So here is the um, heat pipe, model is from side view, model is from top view. And if you still remember what I showed for case three, so at 20,000 seconds, the temperature distribution extends from case eight to case three. And we can also check the situation of heat pipe. We can see that ring one, the ring two fails at 10,000 seconds. And uh, ring four, ring three, and other rings is taking higher hidden, higher burden. And the situation is stem for the energy transfer system. So in this second group of our, our calculation, we check the heat pipe, two rings of heat pipe fails at different time. And we get the conclusion like, the delay of heat pipe failure won't change the tendency of the um, change in the case, but it will be delayed due to different um, delay of the heat pipe failure time. And finally, um, based on all this calculation, um, no matter steady state or change in the safety calculation, so we can safely come to our conclusion. So we successfully developed a 3D and 2D SAM and most covering system and applied it to heat pipe micro reactor. And we checked that energy can be safely uh, removed from the primary system to secondary system by the heat pipe technologies. And we did a steady state calculation and checked some critical parameters for the, for the sensitivity ANSYS. And also we check some change in safety case to check different numbers of heat pipe failure and heat pipe fails at different time. And we can get to the conclusion like some case of the change in the case can slaten the integrity of heat pipe micro reactor system. So in the future, we will on work on the following projects. First is the, uh, we will build a more detailed heat pipe model. 
based on every design and we work work on this with the by covering with wasting house and at the same time we will uh, develop a heat exchange technology and um, we might use super co2 to transfer energy from the condenser heat pipe part to the turbine in the secondary side and all this work uh, um, cooperated with Westinghouse Eric Group. And the, another thing we can do is consider enrichment of the fuel in the micro heat pipe micro reactor system, coupling the neutronic and the small hydraulics, and uh, um, set the fuel into different ignition power in the calculation. And at the end of our presentation, I would like to thanks for the financial support from United States Department of Energy NEAP program. And I would also like to thanks for the support from the magnet manager, Dr. Morton from Idaho National Lab, and also to Dr. Hoos from Aga National Lab, the developer group of the SAM software. Thank you very much for your support. And I also like to uh, thanks for all the audience patient and your time to listen to my presentation. Please let me know if you have any questions. I will be more than happy to be here to discuss the details with you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Wang. As questions are coming in, we'll just take a quick look at the upcoming webinar presentations that we have scheduled in December, development of an austenitic Martin Acidic gradient steel by additive manufacturing. Um, that presentation will be given by Dr. Velray. She is the winner of the Pitcher PhD contest. In January, ESFR Smart, a European sodium fast reactor concept, including the European feedback experience and the new safety commitments following the Fukushima accident by Dr. Joel Gidez. In February, artificial intelligence in support of nuclear energy sector uh, by Professor Newell. We do have some questions. Let me get, um, let me set it so that you can see them as well. All right, so you should see a pane that has the questions listed, um, both you and Patricia, Dr. Wang. The first question is, do you consider the thermal properties of vapor, wick, and wall constant with temperature? Okay, yeah. Um, thanks a lot. And for this question, so so for sure the uh, the vapor, the 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 coolant, uh, the coolant, the temperature has to change because ignition status. Uh, oh oh sorry, uh, we are asking the thermal properties. So um, um, so for the week, and also for the world, we are using the constant temperature. And uh, um, for the current, uh, uh, we are using the uh, um, constant some uh, thermal properties for the material. And uh, um, for the um, 2D sodium, I assume um, in the 2D heat pump model in SAM, uh, the thermal properties could be uh, changed due to different temperature. But we have to check with our uh, the code developer from Aga National Lab. Thank you. Uh, the second question was, um, what is the wick material? Um, so the wick material, um, it could be very different um, from the different design. So uh, if you want to check the details, I suggest you Google a company's name called Advanced uh, on Coolant Technology. And it's specific, it's an industry supply for different types of heat pipes. And there are many weak materials can be considered there. 
and in our modeling, um, since we are cons we are using the same material with the magnet facility from Idaho National Lab, so the weak material we use here is stainless steel, but it will be very different from the reality um, and the industry use. Thanks. Thank you. How do you model HP inside two-phase flow? Oh, um, so this, thanks a lot for this question. Um, so um, this, so we are using a 2D heat pipe model, which is developed by SAM. So this work is published in SAM users manual, uh, which is released. And also um, we, we published the book, uh, introducing different software application um, in nuclear power plants. The book name is Nuclear Power Plant Software uh, Development and Verification and Application. And in one of the chapter, we explain um, the heat transfer model in the heat pipe. So um, it's conceived, it's separate the heat pipe into nine different parts. So it's three um, blocks from internal to outside is the coolant, weak, and wall. From left to right, it's, ide uh, it's vapor, adiabatic, and the condenser. And the each in each of the block, it's something like um, a node. And uh, there could be uh, energy and uh, mass transfer between each nodes. So um, if you want to check more details, you are more than happy uh, to read Sam's user's manual and uh, uh, the book chapter I just mentioned. Thank you. Thank you. Now, follow up is can you predict HP failure due to internal two phase flow limitation? Um, Okay, thanks a lot for this question. Um, so here, um, so think, since SAM is a system level calculation code, so we concede this problem and we, we did a transient case um, from the system level. So um, in this calculation, we directly assume heat pipe fails and when it fails, there's no heat transfer from the uh, heat source to the um, heat sink. So um, if you want to predict and look into more details of a heat pipe of the internal model, I don't think SAM is a good option. Another software I would like to um, suggest is SOCI. Um, SOCI is a software origin from uh, North Alamos National Lab, and it's specific to look into the details, including the two-phase flow um, in the heat pipe. Thank you. Thank you. What would you expect the efficiency of heat pipe to be? Um, okay, thanks for this question. So, um, so expectation at this moment is two kilowatts per heat pipe. Um, that's, the, that's the calendar suggestion and expectation. And as I mentioned, we, uh, we are also making efforts to try to improve the eff efficiency of heat pipe. So it depends on some parameters. I think the most important parameter of, um, uh, affects the efficiency is the diameter of heat pipe. So just to think like you have limited volume for coolant and you can increase it to a large volume. So more, most uh, liquid sodium could be contained in the Cool in the heat pipe, so the more energy it could be transferred. And some other parameters could be um, things like the thermal properties of the weak and the wall, which decide how much energy and the calculation speed from the primary system into the heat pipe. Thank you. Thank you. Dr. Jin, did, did you... Um have a chance to simulate the effect of power increase on heat pipe performance, power transit? And if so, this sheds light on the following. 
And did you model the startup or shutdown of transients? Do you see that one? Do you want me to read it again? Oh, it was I'm little... okay. I'm, okay. It's, it's a long question. I'm still reading. Long. Yeah, I was going to say, yeah, it's a lot harder to read. It's a lot easier to read. Um, so, um, in this calculation um, side I mentioned, uh, we focus on the system level calculation. So um, we uh, mostly are looking for the hot part in the micro reactor system. So an um, audience ask um, how we consider the effects on the heat pipe performance. So the answer is we, uh, we didn't consider this situation, but we have some parallel project um, to study the heat pipe for performance in the region. So for example, um, we our collaborators from uh, the advanced uh, um, current technology and Aga National Lab, we are uh, making a lifelong um, TAM performance test for the heat pipe. So which means we put heat pipe layer are uh, put into a radiance environment and uh, change a bunch of parameters and check uh, the situation, how it uh, affects the situ uh, situation of heat pipe. That is not a part of uh, the numerical work. And uh, uh, in my model, yes, I model the startup and the shutdown transient. So um, it, it's a very simple model. So we can see it. So for example, for the uh, group two um, calculation, we assume some of the heat pipe, it starts to fail at 4, 400 seconds, and then um, absolutely fails at 500 seconds. So there could be some um, a linear um, different of the, uh, of the power. So um, this is how we consider this startup and, uh, start and the shutdown transient in the calculation. But, but for, of course, the real case and from the experiment, it's much more complete. And uh, um, our collaborator of the same developer is still, you know, working on another group. Um, so both of the group in Aga National Lab, and we are still working together to improve the heat pipe model in this code. Thank you. Thank you. Do you think to consider in the future other types of heat pipes and fluids different from sodium? Yeah, sure. Um, so there are many um, fluid could be used. So, so, so of course we can use light water in the heat pipe and the sodium, and uh, we can also use some other um, current in the um, in the heat pipe, such as silver, and uh, there are also some different options. Um, but currently, we mainly focus on sodium because uh, the sodium performance can match the demand of the heat pipe micro reactor, and the cost of sodium is acceptable. Uh, for the other different coolant, we, we, we also submit some proposals to try to check and uh, to try some different uh, fluid, but different materials has different limitation and um, from the safety side, from the cost side. And uh, yes, we, we concede, we, we built some proposals um, changing the fluid. Thank you. Thank you. Will the thermal property of the base flat be considered in flat pulsating heat pipe simulation?
So um, thanks a lot, a lot for this question. I don't think we, we concede uh, the flight pulsating in heat map simulation. Thank you. What is the orientation of the core heat pipes in the magnet? Okay. Yeah, it's it's a very good question. Um so um in our modeling, um at least in our modeling, uh, currently we we can see that it's it's vulture, um, and remember light. So different from um, the the um, the other different types of reactors such as cooled by water or meter. So this heat pipe micro reactor reactor core is a solid structure. So and um, fuel is solid, monoliths is solid. And the uh, uh, heat pipe, you can you can also consider it's it's I mean outside, it, it's it's also kinds of a solid components. So um, I don't think the our retention of the core or heat pipes will affect the results too much. But I think it's a good point. We can we can check that in the future. Thank you. Thank you. What would the state of the art efficiency on the electricity generation side? How mature are different kinds of TEG technologies and what would you recommend? Thermal property. Um, so um, yeah, the, the different the TEG um, so so it depends on the heat transfer coefficient. So so in um, yeah, I, I I don't have too much um, study on the TEG technology, but I know um, uh, the heat transfer coefficient should be from ten percent to fifteen percent for this technology. And of course, the, the higher the better. And for the, also for the TEG technology, you have to. One of the most important thing is trying to uh, reduce the voice uh, and trying to um, keep the voice in a low limit. Uh, and and that's two important parameters. One is heat transfer coefficient. The other one is the voice. Thank you. Thank you. Can you comment on the heat pipe response with increasing number of rings failed? Yeah, of course. So, um, yeah, thanks a lot for this question. So, of course, um, so um, each heat pipe in theory can take two kilowatts um, of energy, and when um, more and more heat pipe fails, the remaining heat pipe has to take a higher burden. So uh, uh, no matter the heat pipe, not only the heat pipe temperature will increase, but also the energy transfer of it, each heat pipe will increase. So um, to some point, it will have to reach us to a limit point and then uh, slate the integrity of the system. And uh, um, so at this moment, as, as we already discussed, the calculation is based on an experimental facility. So a lot of materials such as monoliths or fuel are standing still. So it's still different from um, the reality. And next step, uh, we were working with Westinghouse, Eric group, and using uranium, and we will use um, graphite for the monoliths. And then we will check, I think, some results closer to industry. And at that point, I think we, we can reduce the risk to respond to this question. Thank you. Thank you. Are there welds and heat pipes that might be failure points? Uh, 
uh, I, I don't have uh, I don't have answer to this question, um, but we we have uh, we have experts in our campus. Name is uh, Professor Mark Anderson. I think um, he will know um, if there could be anywhere else much better. Thank so you. You, 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 yeah, you can Google Mark Anderson and UW Madison, and uh, uh, he will be kind to give comments to this question. We appreciate your time and sharing your expertise with us, Dr. Wang. Um, very interesting presentation of your research. That's all the questions that have come in at this point. Thank you to the audience for having such a lively and engaging question and answer period. It's always impressive to see um, the, this kind of enthusiastic response to the presentations, and I really appreciate your engagement. Uh, hopefully, um, the, the system is set up to launch a, a, a survey after this webinar presentation. Um, it'll be the first time I've tried this, so I appreciate your feedback and uh, I appreciate everyone's attendance. Patricia, do you have anything to add before we close the session? No, uh -huh. I don't have anything to add, but again, I would like to thank uh, Professor Wong for giving a, a great webinar. As always, it's so interesting, um, the Q&A session. So thank you so much for taking the time to ask questions, and thank you, Professor Wong, for uh, answering those questions. Indeed. Yeah, thank you. I also would like to thank you for the invitation and also thanks for all audience, patient and your time and the great questions. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, everyone. We wish you a good day. We see Bye -bye. you on the 15th of September. Goodbye.